Radio communications started just over a hundred years ago when a group of scientists, the foremost of whom was Marconi, discovered it was possible to send signals without wires. Development in those early times was often by amateur enthusiasts. Since then, a lot of what we are familiar with today has its roots in radio. Amateur radio is a hobby enjoyed by six million people worldwide. This is my QSL card. People send them to each other once they've contacted each other on the radio. There are nearly 60,000 radio hands and over 700 clubs in the UK alone. Oh, I come every Friday, yes. I'll call the old man of the club. I've talked to somebody in Australia before, in Denmark and New York. It is a vibrant and interesting pastime that spans all age groups, nationalities and languages and can lead to exciting and adventurous careers, even in space. What do you do in your spare time? Over! Look out the window and take photographs of the Earth. Over the next few minutes you will see and hear what amateur radio has to offer. Amateur radio is a worldwide passion shared by hundreds of different cultures and spanning all age groups. Some remote and exotic locations have hardly ever been contacted by radio. This is where de-expeditions come in. Teams of pioneering amateurs set up temporary radio stations in new and different places. We've been to Ghana, Togo, Benin, Ivory Coast and now uh, Burkina Faso. A large part of the, the pleasure we derive from these trips is visiting these fascinating countries, meeting lots of fascinating people. Even the UK's rugged coastline offers some challenging opportunities. We have enough experience of offshore expeditions to feel that this was going to be a very pleasant day out. OK, then, as long as you've got that OK, director via the Bureau. Amateurs around the world queue up to contact these rare and distant stations, which are the focus of contests and competitions, sometimes under very difficult conditions. I worked 131 stations the first night and it was absolutely great. My ears are still ringing though and uh, let's hope the static's kinder to us later on. The vehicle is designed for us to be able to go round show off amateur radio in its best light, but also educate children, adults, about communication in general. Do you want a coffee? I'd kill for a cup of coffee. If nothing else, to change the perception of amateur radio to the general public. Good morning, class. Good morning. What do you think that is? Another No, it's a radio. What you're hearing is a tune. If you listen to the letter L, for instance, did I did it. The children are very, very motivated and see it as a, you know, a really interesting day. Now, the problem with 900 or satellites whizzing around is that normally you'd be looking at a picture, something like this. Whoa, wow, there's loads of them. You've been to the International yeah, Space yeah, Station? Yeah. How do you manage that? Because it's right now 387 kilometres in the sky. <laughs> I've got a uh, class of children here anxious to have their first go at trying out radio from GB4 <laughs> FUN. Hello, Brian. I take it you're uh, enjoying the sights and sounds of the vehicle. What have you escaped and got out of instead of... Assembly. <laughs> It is not well known that the International Space Station carries equipment that works on the amateur radio frequencies. This direct method of communication to Earth is used for education and enables schools and colleges around the world to talk to the astronauts. In August 2003, the first primary school in the UK to make contact with the station was at Neston in Wiltshire. It's a day that the children will always remember. I hope that they will look back on this day and see it as a unique opportunity. Suddenly the date happens, you get about a week's notice and uh, everything switches on. Equipment's got to be in place, towers built. We were only confirming on Monday this week. This is NA1SS. NA1SS, G4 JQX. Yeah, traffic signal from you, Ed. Are you ready to take the first question? Sure, I forgot you love there too. Thanks very much. My name is Rebecca. What do you do in the spacecraft? Over. Hello, Rebecca. Well, we have a lot of things to do up here. Life is actually quite busy. My name is Alex. H how do you get your electricity? Over. Well, Alex, we uh, obviously can't plug ourselves into the power station like you can on the ground. So what we do is we have big solar panels outside the space station. 
My name is Lucy. How can you tell when it's night or day? Over. The easiest thing is to just look down on the ground, because if, the, if you can see the ground very well, then you're on the daylight side of the earth. Okay, fantastic. Amateur radio stations are often set up to commemorate special national events, notably M2000A at Greenwich at the start of the millennium. Congratulations particularly to the Cray Valley Radio Society. This is uh, uh, Mike 2000 Alpha, it's Brian Ricks here, wishing uh, all of you in New Zealand, ZL6A, a very, very happy millennium. In June 2002, a radio station, GB50, was set up on the North Terrace at Windsor Castle to commemorate the Queen's Golden Jubilee. Patron of the Radio Society of Great Britain, the Duke of Edinburgh came to visit the station's activities. His Royal Highness was presented with a gold-plated Morse key. GB50 remained at the castle for two weeks and made 48,000 contacts with 202 different countries. Hi, I'm Andrew Finch, M3FMA. I've got this award because I'm the 5,000th Foundation Amateur. In the past few years, the Radio Society of Great Britain and the government's Radio Communications Agency have developed a foundation license for amateur radio. This makes entry to the hobby more accessible. Andrew was the lucky winner of the 5,000th award. What happened was um, we went for a tour around Bulldock, which is monitoring station in Hertfordshire. I was presented with a government award and my radio, which is an FT817. M3 CDS, this is M3 from Are you there, over? I first got interested in radio when I went to my scout hut they had a station set up and we got to send a message to another contact. How are you doing today, over? I have a friend at the moment who's got the same licence as me and we both went on the same course and we did the same exam and um, we talked to each other a lot over the radio but I've also got this other friend who lives in Hong Kong and um, she's also thinking of doing her licence and if we get an HF antenna I can talk to her as well. Around the world, radio amateurs are occasionally called upon to turn their passion into a vital communication network for emergencies, where normal communications have been knocked out. America has its fair share of earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods and forest fires. The wind shifted back to the west and, uh, or northwest and uh, it's, it's moving the fire back in this direction. The fire is just right over this ridge here behind me. Amateurs belonging to emergency network groups were called out on September the 11th when America came under attack. Mobile phones and telephone lines were jammed and virtually useless. Dozens of radio amateurs helped the police and fire departments maintain communication in New York, Pennsylvania and Washington DC. In Britain, we may not get the extremes of weather to cause so many disasters, but nevertheless, emergency networks like Raynet exist to provide local and sometimes national events like the London Marathon with excellent voluntary communications for the ambulance services and disabled wheelchair competitors. Raynet have groups across the country to provide volunteer expert communications to those that need it. Overseas, there are countries that do not have a communications infrastructure through war or natural disaster. Amateur radio volunteers are among the first to assist international aid agencies in setting up reliable communication networks and in some cases national radio stations. If you want to know more about amateur radio, find us at this address. These are people who in any other realm would be called professionals. They're the people who know how to put the pieces together, know how to build the networks, know how to get information from one place to another when every other system has failed. I don't think that's amateur.